More than 15 million people have had their DNA tested, and much to the chagrin of genealogists, the majority of them have no interest in genealogy. So if you're not interested in genealogy, why would you have your DNA tested? Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is a segment of DNA. Today we're going to talk about the reasons why people may take a DNA test. And what most people don't realize is there's really three types of information we can gather from a DNA test. And depending on which company you use for that DNA test, you may get one, two, or even all three of these categories of information. The first category of information that we can get from DNA testing is ethnicity or admixture or heritage or biogeographical diversity. It seems that none of the companies can come to a consensus on what we're going to call it. So for this video and for most of my videos, I use the word ethnicity because there's a couple of companies use that and people are usually familiar with that term. Now for your ethnicity results, your DNA is compared to a sample of the reference population. And that reference population is made up of people who represent those different areas around the world that are being reported on. Now this type of information is heavily marketed by all of the major testing companies because it's something that most people understand. It's actually relatively easy to understand that you're Irish or you're Italian or you're Indian or whatever you are. And that's one thing that draws people into DNA testing in the first place. Now one thing everybody should remember is that ethnicity results are only a rough estimate. Now, unfortunately, most of the companies actually report those ethnicity results to one or two decimal places, which gives them an air of accuracy and precision. But in actuality, if you dig further, you will find that that's actually representative of a broad range of what it possibly could be. Now, also in this category, I include things like reports on Neanderthal DNA, reports on ancient DNA, because from a genealogy standpoint, they don't provide much information. And the reports that you get about your Neanderthal DNA or ancient DNA sources are not individualized just to you. They're really about broad swaths of the population that happen to go through different migrations over time. Now the second category of information is cousin matching. And this is the one that genealogists go crazy over because it is phenomenal. Cousin matching allows us to compare our DNA with the thousands and millions of other people in each of the databases and see who matches at different locations. And based on where those matches are and how much of those matches there are, we can determine what certain relationships are. The great thing about this is even though there may not be records that show that relationship, DNA becomes a record of that relationship. And it's not limited to just a few people. You can have hundreds and thousands of matches that are all related to you because of your DNA test. Now these results are usually only good out to about six or seven generations because beyond that, you share so little amount of DNA with the people that you'd be related to that it's really by chance that you might find that you're related. And also, for a lot of people, at six or seven generations, you're getting to the extreme of where you may find records to be able to show that that relationship actually exists. So DNA is not unlimited in the cousin matching aspect. Now, DNA testing is also done to identify specific relationships. And probably the one most people are familiar with is paternity testing. Paternity testing particularly court order paternity testing, is not the same thing as a genetic genealogy company's test. In fact, the genetic genealogy company's test is not even going to be admissible in court because it doesn't follow a chain of command. Additionally, paternity testing actually looks at different things than what the genealogical testing for DNA looks at. Because DNA is passed on from parents to children, it is a much more reliable predictor of a relationship then some other things that we sometimes use, like comparing two photographs and trying to determine based on facial features whether or not they're within the same family or even how closely they may be related. For close relationships, 
DNA will identify how you are related. Now the third category of DNA testing has to do with help and medical information. Currently, 23andMe is the only DNA genealogy company that also offers a service of your help and medical information based on your DNA. But there are some third-party websites where you can get similar information. For your health and medical information, your DNA results are being compared with research that has been done to show where there are links between DNA and certain traits or medical conditions. Now it's important to know that these traits and medical conditions can be classified really into three broad categories. First off is a single gene expression. And what this means is that if you have a certain gene, then you're going to have whatever characteristic or medical condition is associated with that. For instance, the ABO blood group determines whether you are blood type A, blood type B, blood type O, or blood type AB. And it is just that one gene that determines it. So by looking at your DNA, and in particular looking at the few SNPs that distinguish A from B from O from AB, you can tell whether or not you're going to have a certain blood type. The second type would be a multi-gene expression. And this is where there's actually several genes that all affect a certain characteristic or medical condition. The one I like to use is actually our hair color, eye color, and skin color. They're all related together, but there is a panoply of genes that contribute to it. It's not just going to be one gene that tells you what your hair, eye, and skin color are, but it is the interaction of several of these genes and how they are expressed that gives the variety we see throughout humans throughout the world. Finally, the third category is external influence. And this is when you have genes that can code for certain things or may be expressed in certain ways, but they also depend on outside influence. Now, when I say outside influence, this may be the environment that you have, this may be family history, and there's a lot of our genome that we're still trying to decode how it works and how certain things are expressed. And so there's some of these things that we don't know. For a lot of medical conditions, particularly cancers, there are genetic components to it, but there's also environmental components to it. So for instance, you may have a gene that gives you a higher predisposition to prostate cancer, but that doesn't mean you're going to have prostate cancer. Likewise, just because you don't have a gene that gives you a higher likelihood of prostate cancer, that doesn't mean you won't get prostate cancer. So there's other factors that are involved in some of these traits and medical conditions that are being reported on. 23andMe is the only company that has aspects of all three of these major categories of DNA, ethnicity, cousin matching, and health and medical conditions. Family tree DNA, MyHeritage, and Ancestry DNA only have ethnicity and cousin matching. And finally, Living DNA right now only has ethnicity results, but they do plan on adding the cousin matching feature later on in 2018. So as you are going through your matches and as you are looking at genetic genealogy, recognize a lot of the people that have tested didn't test for the cousin matching. They may have tested for one of the other two major categories of information. But that doesn't mean that they might not be interested in the future. So if you're trying to decide if you want to have a DNA test, figure out what information you want to get from it and then decide which company you should use based on what information you want. And if you have any questions about what information you can get out of a DNA test, put it in the comments below and we can have a discussion about it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that it can reach more viewers.